So, who are CCS? Um, there's some fairly big numbers on there, and I'm not going to spend any time on them, but it just gives you a bit of context in terms of size and scale. So we're an executive agency of the, the Cabinet Office in London. We're a not-for-profit organisation. We're all civil servants. Um, and we're essentially a buying organisation that puts in place frameworks, contracts and MOUs on behalf of the public sector. Um, as I say, we're the biggest public buying organisation in the UK in terms of size and scale. But the important part is, is that we're actually across the, the UK. Last year, we did about £15.7 billion through our frameworks. Um, in Scotland, that was around the £700 million mark, so we're fairly well represented in Scotland. And we delivered almost £900 million worth of, of savings. Our priorities, like the rest of the, the, the public sector in the, the, the UK, are, are threefold. The first one is maximising commercial benefits. So for us as taxpayers, making sure the people that spend the money are getting maximum benefit from that money. For us as an organisation, one key um, driver is focusing on the customer, and the customer to us is the public sector buying or uh, public sector organisations out there who are using our frameworks. And finally, it's about strengthening the UK economy, and you will hear the, uh, the government in Scotland talking about this uh, all the time as well. So what can we do to influence what's happening in steel markets and other markets that are out there that are critical to supply uh, the UK economy? We work in four uh, pillar areas. That's buildings, people, technology, and corporate solutions. And I'm not going to spend any time on that slide, but it's just to give you an idea of the categories and the areas that we are involved in. So moving on to something a wee bit more meaty in terms of what CCS expects of our suppliers. Well, the first thing is innovation. We hope that you can innovate. And what that means is we hope that you can bring to us solutions that will deliver services to the public better than we are, we're currently doing. Um, Stephanie's a great example of that. Her company's a great example of that. The second thing is, is we hope that you will embrace competition. Um, it would be great um, for those of you in the room who are suppliers if we could just hand out contracts willy-nilly, but the reality is, is that we, we cannot do that. Everything has to be open, everything has to be transparent. We also expect you to deliver savings, but we're also happy for you to make a reasonable profit. Um, you'll notice that I've said a reasonable profit there, and that's to be determined, and that would be part of the, the, the discussions and negotiations going forward. And we also expect you to act the way we do in terms of transparency. Um, a lot of the frameworks, a lot of the contracts that we put in place are done on an open book basis, and we operate in exactly the same way. So when, when our organizations who, who use CCS come to us and say, tell me a bit about what's going through traffic management technology or whatever it is, we can provide that information, we can provide that to, uh, to any organization that asks for us. And finally, for those who are larger suppliers, and this is absolutely critical, we expect you to create opportunity f further down the supply chain and open that up to other organizations. In return, um, we are committed to making things easier um, through advertising, uh, our bidding process, and our documentation. Uh, I've been with CCS for 10 years. Uh, my background is public sector procurement. I've been doing that for nearly 30 years now, and our documentation when I started was, without exaggeration, that thick. That's the typical size of a framework agreement. That would be a small one. Some of the bigger ones were, were boxes full. Um, we now have a standard forum contract that is about, if you can't see me at the back, it's about an inch thick. Um, so we, we've listened to what markets have told us in terms of complexity, in terms of difficulty to deal with, and we've dealt with it, and we've dealt with it in a really effective way. Um, we will provide opportunity, and uh, Stephanie and uh, my day today has been about talking about opportunity to the, the myriad of organizations that have come to speak to us. So everyone in the room is probably aware of Public Contract Scotland, but we sometimes forget that there's actually bigger markets out with the, the Scottish geographic area. And if you want to find out about opportunities out with Scotland, you have to look a wee bit further. And one of the things that we would um, endorse is Contracts Finder that's provided by the Cabinet Office in London. And that's where 
the vast majority, high 90% of the public sector in England, Ireland and Wales will advertise their opportunities. Um, one that will be important to you is, is that we will always champion prompt payment from our suppliers. So if there is a difficulty in receiving payment, we will go after them on your, on your behalf. And we've got some really quite stringent targets. So we expect 80% of all invoices to be paid within five days. And we certainly expect 100% of invoices to be paid within 30 days. We will use digital solutions wherever possible. So we have a number of portals that the public sector can access for fleet, for travel, for digital marketplace, which is particularly successful here in Scotland. And we'll always keep you informed of what we're doing through web, our website, through webinars, through newsletters, through events like this, and through social media. Although don't ask me anything about the latter. There will be occasions where it can go a wee bit awry. Um, and again, in the, our efforts to encourage transparency, there is something called the Public Procurement uh, Review Service. This is not just lip service in terms of we commit to you. If you think that there is something that is not quite right in any procurement at all, you can go to this Public Procurement Review Service and they will actually audit how we've conducted our business now. It's important to note that that's not just in terms of CCS. So if there are suppliers in the room today who are bidding for, I don't know, let me call it a, a Carlisle City Council contract that you think is the, the, the process is, good, is flawed in some way, you can go to the Public Procurement Review Service and they will um, conduct an audit of that for you. We have a massive uh, commitment to SMEs and an aspirational target that by 2022, 33% of public spending with private business will go to SMEs. For those that have been around working in the public sector for a while, you'll notice that there's a, that there's a massive change in direction there. Uh, we had a target of 25% at one time, but that was 25% of contracts to go to SMEs, not 25% of value. Um, and, and one of the, the things that the, 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 the current government brought into play was to say, that's all far too easy. You could have 25 25% of contracts for the value of £1,000 each, and it's nothing. What we really need to do is get the money out there to them, not just the documentation. Um, to further enhance that and enforce it, there is someone called a Crown Rep, a guy called Mark Trainer, and he's responsible for delivery and monitoring of um, our commitment to, to the SME market. And if I may just share one example with you of um, this in action, it's uh, we, we have a, a, a portal called the Digital Marketplace that has a whole host of framework agreements on there, and they are very widely used uh, across Scotland um, through G Cloud and there's something called Digital Outcomes and, and Specialists. And in financial year 2018-2019, we had £70 million pounds going through uh, those two frameworks in Scotland. This flew across my desk as part of a, a general sort of mailing junket, but it really jumped out at me. And the reason it jumped out at me was because £70 million pounds is a lot of money. Uh, but the most important part of that was, was that 71% that of the £70 million went to SMEs who are based in Scotland. Not all of the business was with Scottish public bodies. There were public bodies from south of the border, from Ireland and from, from Wales as well, but that money was coming back. So almost 50 million pounds went back into, the, into suppliers based here in Scotland. And again, to sort of further emphasize that, the current UK um, percentage is only 41.5%. So we want you to be part of the conversation. And before we ask you to tender, one of the things that's quite unique about us is we're very heavily into pre-market engagement. We do a lot of relet work, but we do a lot of innovative work as well. And we want to make our frameworks best in class. So what do we do to, to get there? Well, the only people that can tell us if we're good are the suppliers and the customers who use the frameworks. So, you know, we really need you to become a bit more committed um, to what we're doing. Tell us where we're getting it wrong. We've had lots of that. Sorry, we, Stephanie hasn't. I have today had lots of folk coming and tell me where we've got it wrong. But that's great because I can then feed that in. And then next time round, you know, maybe it'll be less people coming to the stand and saying you need to do something differently, which is great. 
So how do you do that? Well, it's fairly, fairly simple. Sign up to Contracts Finder, that's the first thing. We need you to monitor all our prior information notices and express an interest where you have an interest. Please attend our information events, whether they be physical or whether they be webinars. They are all published on our website and they are all free to attend. You can register on our e-sourcing tool. Um, good luck with that one just now because we're in transition from one to another, but hopefully it will become fairly straightforward. And importantly, monitor our pipeline that's on our website. That will tell you all the upcoming opportunities, all the stuff that we're working on, and all the areas that we would like you to become involved in. I'm not going to insult your intelligence as suppliers. Public procurement's been around for a long, long time, but there are a number of bidding tips that we like to, to get out there. First one is read the evaluation criteria. That will determine what you put in your answers. Answer all your questions simply and clearly. We're not looking for fluffiness at all. Two words can say a lot. Um, tell us how you can help, not what you can do. So if there's something that's out there for a specific project or something, tell us how you can deliver that project, not what you've done in the past. Uh, don't use gener uh, generic answers or marketing materials. We don't look at them. Try to make your answers real and interesting. That can be difficult. And be aware of all deadlines and make sure that you hit them. And finally, and this is really important, if you're not sure, ask the question. We have abandoned tender exercises at key stages because someone has asked a question that's identified to us a flaw in our procurement. We won't just proceed with that. We would stop it at that point, make the correction, and then move on with the procurement. And I'm just going to fly through just a couple of screenshots that we have here. So becoming a supplier to Crown Commercial Service, this is on the gov.uk website. Um, that's just a screenshot of our pipeline and where you can find it. And if you're not take, writing any notes or anything just now, we're just in stand nine through there and Stephanie's great at pointing in the direction of all this stuff. And finally, um, this is what Contracts Finder looks like. It's very, very similar to Public Contracts Scotland. It may actually be the same platform. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure. Um, but bear in mind that this is UK public sector you're getting access to and not just Scotland. Um, on that note, I'd like to hand over to Stephanie now because I know Gillian's about to pull me off with a hook um, because I'm probably running over time. And Stephanie will hopefully um, bestow the virtues of becoming involved with CCS and what good looks like and what a successful company can become. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you very much. I think my introduction was going to be so nice to see so many of you actually here today. But actually, the truth is I expected a lot more. I don't work for CCS, but I'm a supplier of public sector. And as Paul mentioned, my name is Stephanie Staubach, and I work for a company called Topmark Claims Management. And for those of you who don't know what a claims management company does, we actually investigate claims on behalf of public sector organisations. And that can be anything from someone that slips on a public highway that's suing the local council, right through to complex employers, liability fatalities, and also high profile cases involving alleged abuse and, and breaches of the Human Rights Act. I think from my perspective as a supplier today, I'm not here to, to tell you that for me, it's been an easy journey in public procurement. But to talk to you a little bit about my own personal experience with it, um, to tell you about the things that I was warned against and also the, the real benefits of actually coming to the party and bidding. I, I set up the company in 2006 and that was really based on looming redundancy. The, the large company I worked for, an international insurance provider, was looking to centralise their claims department from Glasgow to Norwich. Um, that meant that me and various other members of the team were made redundant. And really on the back of that, I made a number of farewells to clients I'd really looked after for 12 years. I think I'd fostered great relationships with them. 
predominantly Scottish local authorities like the Vries and Gallery Council, Scottish Borders Council, Fife Council. And it was really on speaking to those clients and, um, and talking to them about what a pleasure it was working with them and, and moving on. A couple of them had asked me if I would come and work for them and deal with claims in-house. Um, one or two had asked if I would consider setting up my own consultancy that they would be able to support. And really on the back <laughs> on the back of that, and a few glasses of wine in Maxi O'Connor's next to Queen Street in Glasgow, I actually phoned my husband and I said, you know, I think I could do this. You know, I've worked for larger companies for the best part of 20 years, and I'm the one that actually does the work, and I think I know how to do that. I didn't know anything about running a business. I didn't know anything about procuring for business, never mind public, public sector or commercial. And I think that the compliments that you get from people that want to work for you just gave me that boost to think, I'm going to take the risk to do this. And in 2006, Top Mark Claims Management was born. Uh, at that time, we did hit the ground running. We had uh, a couple of clients that, that wanted to work for us, but back then it was an enormous struggle to get into the public sector. There were barriers, uh, and I'm quite sure that anyone in this room that's actually tried to bid for public contracts in that era have experienced this. We had financial thresholds, minimum, that we had to acquire. If MOD wanted to procure services, we had to have a minimum turnover of one million pounds. And, and at that time, quite frankly, it seemed absolutely unachievable. We also, in some contract opportunities, had to have a track record of maybe a minimum of three contracts that we had to show that we were already providing the service and that clients were already happy. And that was an enormous challenge for a startup company, for a micro company, let alone a company that was a Scottish organization. And we're, we have a base in Glasgow. And I think from the early days of that, we decided that we weren't going to get it in the front door, so we had to get in the back door of things. And the way to do that for us was that we had to offer some complimentary work. Um, and that would involve speaking to local authorities in our area, uh, speaking to the lo local police authority and offering to do some free training to help them identify um, the techniques to, to, to highlight fraudulent activity in claims management. We also had to, to, to offer free services to come in to help them maybe fatten up their own internal experience. And on the back of that complimentary service, we really impressed and that led to some paid work. For three years that led to small but consistent paid work. And what that led to was an evidence base of clients in the public sector. We got great case studies, we got fantastic testimonials. And by 2009, that gave us the confidence to think, you know what, we're good enough to bid for the UK government, we're good enough to bid for the wider public sector. And we used that in addition to the experience that we had as individuals for companies that we'd worked for in the past. And it's an important point to make. If you are a startup company and you don't necessarily have the track record of, of, of a client base, if you've worked for a company that's actually done that and you've been instrumental in that, you can showcase that experience. And, and from our perspective, um, the evidence base with that led us in 2009 to, we won our first big contract with Scottish Water, followed by five large English local authority clients. And that really put us in the map of being the only Scottish independent claims management company. And that was an enormous an achievement. The competitors that we were up against were the Zurich Insurance of this world, the Gallagher Bassett. These companies had two, 3,000 offices throughout the world. They had enormous buying power. We were really punching above our weight. But the critical element was that we had to be in it to win it. We, we believed in what we did. But we always kept our eye on the prize. Central government was something that we always coveted. And there were so many people that in the early stages that would tell us that 
first of all, a small company would be dead in the water with public procurement. The UK government would not only be prepared to work for a small work with a small company, but there is no way that they would be prepared to work with a small Scottish company. And nothing could be further from the truth because from my perspective, you've got to be in it to win it, in for a penny, in for a pound. And in 2014, we had our first opportunity to bid. And we won a contract with a, a government department called the Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport. I have to confess that I had never heard of this department before we actually won the contract. But that was a, a real learning curve. But ultimately, what that taught me was there is an audience there. And the biggest disadvantage that we all have is apathy. You know, there's so many suppliers that we meet that tell you that this is a waste of time, that you don't have an audience, it's too much work. But the thing to remember is that one win could be a six-figure sum, could be a seven-figure sum, and it can utterly transform your business. And in 13 years of trading, what I can tell you is that we've procured over £20 million pounds worth of public sector contracts. Now, within that, we have prestigious names like the MOD, BBC Worldwide we work with. We also have Home Office, Police Scotland. There is no limit to our ambition if you're ready to persevere. And in the early part of, of 2016, we won the first CCS framework agreement. We'd never bid for a framework agreement before. We didn't expect to win it, to be honest. It was an insurance agreement that um, effectively allowed us to provide claims management services for 15 central government departments plus 77 uh, arm's length bodies. Now, an arm's length body would be something from the Environment Agency to food standards. So an enormous stripping roast of things. Um, we didn't expect to win it. First bid with CCS, we were successful. Now, from my part, that means that we absolutely have to make the effort to bid. And I think, from our perspective, we're a Glasgow company. We're dealing with all of the insurance arrangements for the UK government. Think about what that actually means. Think about what you think you know about public procurement, what you've been told, you know, what, what some of the negative attitudes have been. We were a micro company, we're now a small company, and it's exceptionally attractive to any public procurement um, body to work with us. There's now qu quotas, there's now an ability to, to want to work with us. CCS have been absolutely instrumental in transforming our business. We won a government contract, as I mentioned, that effectively doubled our workforce in six weeks in 2016. And my advice to you is that come to the party, you're automatically invited. The restrictions that I had in place in 2006 don't matter anymore. You don't need a minimal turnover threshold. You don't need to have a track record and experience. You just need to be in it to win it. And the biggest disadvantages that you have is some of the negative opinions in bidding. So some of the things that CCS have brought to the table for us since, since 2014 include an absolute transparency. When I look back in 2006, try getting a contract in, a contact in Ministry of Defence to speak to you about opportunities that would come up. It just wouldn't happen. There was a wall of silence. And CCS have now got a number, an email address, and I'm able to go to them and say, look, I've looked at the framework con consistently out. I don't really have an interest in a great deal of them. When will, here's what I do, when will that come out? And they constantly provide encouragement to bid and information that prepares you to bid. The other biggest advantage of CCS is the pipeline opportunities. And as a small company, I know that I can have overnight 3,000 offices throughout the UK. But what I can do, if I'm given enough time, is put a network of contractors in place for that. So if I have an opportunity in the pipeline 
of the CCS information that I know in 12 months time, a large contract I'm interested in comes out, then I can start to build up a supply chain free of charge that actually is, is equipped to provide a quote for that opportunity, whether it's a, as a prime contractor or a consortium vehicle. And my advice today would be that there has just never been a better time to bid. Genuinely, there hasn't. The hurdles that I faced in 2006 don't exist. I think another point to make is that you have to get on contract finder. You have to actually see where the opportunities are. You have to express an interest. Don't have any preconceived ideas. Forget what you think you know, what you've been told about the procurement process. And above all else, perse persevere. I think the key for me, when I started, I had about 30 attempts before I got on the radar of public sector. And I reckon if I started now, it would probably take three to six months. But you have to have the ambition and the foresight to really you know, put aside some of the negative images that you might have, have received. And actually, if you can win one public sector contract, you can win 100. Because the biggest opportunity is that you can get feedback. And if you get three out of five for most of your questions, you get feedback, you can build that template for success. And I think that the one advice I would give to you today is that there are opportunities here and genuinely the UK government through CCS and the wider public sector, they're crying out for it. But the biggest disadvantage that you have as a supplier is thinking that you can't break into it. And that's the, that's the most important message that I would give to you today. Thank you for that.